what a difference 10 days will make. Some good and some bad. Well, I guess it isn't groundhogs tearing up my garden. It's ducks that grew up. So when we arrived home the night we got here, there were green tomatoes all over the place. You see that? We found green tomatoes just littering the ground with bites taken out of them. Some of these branches were pulled down. I've picked up some. Some have come back again, fallen down again. And starting to see damage on little plants all around, including the peppers. Well... What do you have to say for yourself? Huh? Did you bring those kids in here and teach them to attack my garden? I don't appreciate it. You can see we had another visitor to the garden. I don't think she did anything in the garden. I think she went straight over to Miss Elsie's hayfield, which is where she was found, and returned promptly. But we have a lot of other things going on in this garden. Some good and some bad. As you can see, the good is that these plants are growing like crazy still. So we still have lots of opportunities for tomatoes to still form fruit and produce. But not if we don't act quickly. July is the month where blight sets in for many tomato growers so we need to get any of these leaves that have turned brown or spotted cut off of all of these plants to slow down the spread of the blight and that's one of the reasons why we plant again in july but even these that we planted just the day before we left have blight coming up from the bottom or the splash when it rained or when they were watered got back from vacation and discovered that our babies have hatched. We had these praying mantis egg sac that were supposed to stay in the jar until they hatched. It's your food, buddy. And it said it could take a couple of weeks. So they hatched. And now we can let them take care of our aphid problem. So I think what I want to do is just lay the jar on its side and let them, oh, there they go. I was going to just lay it on its side and let them crawl out because I don't want to hurt them trying to pull out. Here, look at that. Hi babies. You can get to work. So it looks like this one hasn't hatched yet. I don't see any openings on the ends. Whereas this one, you see all the exudia? That's the shed skin from the first molt. So that one is hatched. I think because that one already hatched, I'm going to go ahead and leave this one here. Because it's probably close to hatching too. And I don't want to miss that opportunity. How cool are you babies? Get to work. We have some beautiful cucumbers growing. And some that mm, probably stayed on much too long. So I'm actually going to leave this one. The only thing this would be good for at this point, the seeds inside are going to be so big that I would probably just blend it up and make a relish of it. But I think I might leave it to collect seeds because I really like this cucumber and I have no idea what it is. Once the cucumber starts to turn yellow like this, you know that it has gone much too far and it is overripe. This one's also hiding some big ones. They're pretty long, but they're still usually nummy and tender at this size. This is good and bad. I kind of figured this was going to happen while we were gone, 
because I was seeing the signs of the downward spiral on our potatoes. So the good thing is, is that means the potatoes are ready to be harvested. So it's not bad that it looks like it's all dead. It's actually a good sign. Lots of vines that have gone much too far out of their zones, whether it's cucumbers or <laughs> snake gourd bean. I gotta come back through and train them to go back up their trellis wherever they have fallen. The sweet potato vines, I'm trying to keep growing in the composted area. So if they don't stay when I place them, I take a stick and I just hold them like that with the stick. And what I might do once I see all of this soil area completely covered with vines is I might start snipping off any vines that come out and feeding it to the animals or using it for our own dinner. You just cook it up like spinach. The squash have been pecked at by the ducks. I thought it might have been groundhogs, but now I'm seeing ducks out here. That's probably what it is. We see you do have some squash vine borer damage, but it had a hard time penetrating the trunk, so it's still alive. This is one of the reasons why I like to grow the lemon squash. It is hard for the squash vine borer to kill it. <laughs> these have grown insanely huge in 10 days these were the cuttings that we planted of the cherry tomatoes that we had growing over there the vining okra or ridged loofah has started to bloom this had a flower bud on it last night I am kind of curious why I'm not seeing fruit development with my snake gourd bean. You see how many flowers have dropped? I don't know if I'm, I should have plenty of pollinators, of course, with three hives located close by and the fact that I have lots of pollinators in this garden, I expected to see some fruit developing, honestly but maybe they're just all male flowers. I'm not as familiar with how to tell the difference with these flowers. They're quite beautiful. So the Chinese red noodle bean has produced fruit, but it is so covered with aphids that it's becoming deformed. The skin is bumpy and lumpy. We have been doing everything we can think of with these aphids. I've actually had other people reach out to me and state that their red noodle beans are covered in aphids when their other beans are not. So I'm thinking that they might be great for a trap crop. But, wow. Ugh. And then the fire ants collect the aphid nectar and they bite, that's not fun. And then the leaves get so bad. Ugh, that's so gross. I need to cut it all off. I just need to come in here and trim out. I don't want to use any pesticides because I've put out beneficial insects. I'm hoping to give them a better shot. I definitely have pollinators. Here's one of our honeybees visiting the plant. Tomatoes doing okay. They definitely are fighting the blight. Going to have to do a lot of trimming to trim those back. And then our weeds. Oh my goodness. Nobody told me the weeds would grow so much they'd cover up pots in 10 days. Oh my goodness. That's the ones that hurt to pull out too. All those thorns. Even all through here this was mulch in the Bermuda grass which is my least favorite of all the weeds in the world, I think. Bermuda grass. See how it runs across the surface and roots everywhere it's touching? It just keeps going and it'll break off right where those parts are touching when you try to pull it up. So you gotta be real careful to go and grab it by the base where the root is. 
of each of those clusters as you pull it back. See, it's coming up pretty easy because of the mulch, but still, this is going to take forever to try to get back under control. I do not like this stuff. My lettuce seed heads are starting to turn brown. I don't know if it's because it just rained or what. Normally, they turn into little fluff balls and I don't catch them very quick. But I think I'll be able to harvest the seed once it dries off out here. <laughs> These Kajari melon have grown pretty crazy since we were here last. <laughs> Gonna have to train these babies through the vine, through the trellis. They are covered in blooms, so that's good. Hopefully we'll have some wonderful melons to enjoy very shortly. Not sure if I believe these measurements. Two inches of rain, was that all last night? Or was this throughout the 10 days? I heard it didn't rain here for 10 days, but we got a huge storm last night. Could it have been two inches? I'm gonna have to check my app. So despite some blight, some weeds, some damaged plants from some rascally ducks. <laughs> we overall have a pretty good garden in 10 days of neglect. So I'm pretty happy about that. These Muscovy don't waste any time. Now that her babies are independent and gardening on their own, she is back to laying on a nest. I hardly even recognize these babies. They are like full-size ducks now. Aren't they pretty? Those are the first hatch of babies that hatched. And they are big and full grown. These sheep really missed us. They are following me around as I check on everyone. Usually baby. Pay me more. <laughs> make make me pet you I'm not even moving my hand she's just moving her head where she wants to be petted you sweet girl you sweet too Ilma yeah you my sweet Wilma <laughs> Betty why you bite my shirt jealous <laughs> Sheep, you turned out to be more fun than I thought you would be, that's for sure. Yeah, you did. Nice babies. <laughs> Sweet girls. Yep, Cooney Coonies are still big fat pigs. You too, Peter Pepper. Hey, hi lashes. I uh I heard that uh there was a cow out while I was gone. Oh, it wasn't you, was it? Nope. It was mama. Mama friendship who never gets out. There was a little bit of a snafu with Ryan's temporary fence. What? So Luckily, the neighbors came, got her put back in, lifted the fence back up where it was pushed down by her, and she got out again, but while wow, the farm sitter was here. So, farm sitter put her in here. We've got to get that fence repaired before we can put her back out again. All the chickens and ducks are doing great. You can see that last batch of babies. <laughs> Yes, I know. You see the last batch of baby ducklings are getting big fast. Those were just itty bitty newborns when we left. And of course the goats are fat and lazy. 
staying in their shelter because it rained this morning. And the quail are doing great. As you can see, they have begun laying. So we are getting some blue celadon eggs now. Some of them are kind of brownish tinted, but most of them are nice bright blue. Oh my goodness. Our little singleton has grown up all the way. Looks like he might be a male drake, as I am seeing him already developing some cronkles. Is that what they're called on the nose? Robert David Avery's, correct me if I'm wrong. What is it called? The, the growths on their faces, the red stuff that the boys have more of. This is Daddy Drake. Dr. Drake, Daddy Drake, ooh, 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 he's so handsome. He's from Cock Hill Farm. Robert brought him to us. Thanks, Robert. Oh, yeah, like I had told Ryan, I didn't think that this rickety fence setup that he did was going to work long term. It didn't even last the 10 days while we were out of town, so gonna have to get that fixed before the cows can go back out here but it's probably a good thing anyway because now he can get in here with the tractor and take down all that dog fennel before it seeds <laughs> the guinea hogs are doing good everybody thinks that because I'm out here it's time to eat because it's close to feeding time guinea hogs are doing good over there getting fat Titus Never was nice to the farm sitter, so that's unfortunate. But he's a stink. Looks like he's got himself wrapped around a branch. So I'm gonna go in there and loosen him up. Silly boy. Yes, Coonies. Yes, yes, yes. Dinner's coming soon. They're behind me making a bunch of noise. Yes, we love you, Bowser. You're our favorite. We know. I didn't say that, Bill. I didn't say he was a favorite. I, 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 that was, you misheard me. So that mystery Asian squash has changed color. It's like a buff, like a um, butternut squash almost color, but it's not the shape. And I very well might have woodchucks in the garden because I don't think a duck spill could cut into this firm vegetable. You get out of here. There's a big one back there, a lot bigger. I think the kids' tomatoes did better in this shade than the other tomatoes, interestingly. Hardly any blight over here, but we got a tomato hornworm somewhere. Where are you? Where are you hiding, fat guy? I know you're here somewhere. I always look up from where I see the damage because they usually travel up the plant. Hmm. Did you travel over to another branch? I see some damage there. Sometimes just shaking the branch, I'll hear a click, click, click. Like it's just a defense mechanism. I don't see him. Maybe Ryan already got him? Or maybe he's already pupated, who knows? But this is falling over. I'm going to have to add extra support to that cage. This one's growing really well, too. And uh, these peppers look like they need some staking. I don't know if they got knocked over. Things look trampled in here. Like, it looks like something walked through here a lot. See, those vines from the squash are pressed down into the soil. So, groundhog or ducks, not sure which. And, uh, yeah. Peppers are starting to fruit. I don't know what these peppers are either. Some type of Asian pepper, I'm sure, but don't know what kind until I eat it, which I'm trying to find the one. Okay, I was gonna say, did it get picked off? No, right here. This is the one that's closest to being done. One thing I learned that I need to make sure I have somebody do if I'm going out of town this long again in the summer is to water these ferns because I didn't think it was going to be an issue, but they're pretty, pretty dry and crispy. So 
they're gonna take a minute to bounce back into their full green glory again. Luckily, we got enough rain that the front yard orchard is doing just fine. Everything is just about as we left it. A little bit of new growth on the tips of some of them. Of course, we don't plan on there being a whole lot of growth the first year when you plant a fruit tree. You want the plant to be focused on the underground growth, which is the root system that's going to be the first year devoted to the roots so that the rest of the years of this plant's life it will do better and better because it'll have a strong foundation. Wow, what a difference 10 days can make. Mostly on the weeds. The grass has grown as tall as the corn. Would you look at that? Unfortunately, the corn has not fared very well during this drought. And because of that, we have had very little ear production on our sweet corn. The ears that have produced have been very tiny. We did get one that had a delicacy of a fungus growing on it. I will be eating that mushroom that grew on that corn. It will be delicious. Sadly, you can't even tell that I have beans in here because the grass grew taller than it. So I don't even know if these green beans are producing, I'm seeing some blooms. But because we didn't weed eat it down when we could tell what was what, we uh, won't be able to do much to save it, I'm afraid. The good thing is, is that we can use these corn stalks for decoration for the fall, and we can also feed them to the pigs and cows, so they won't go complete waste. I always try to look at the bright side of things with my garden failures. That might be a failure in one way, but in another way, I could have some benefits from my mistakes. And one of these is to learn more about growing corn. Uh, clearly, this isn't a crop I'm super familiar with growing, and I need to do better. So next year, we'll do even better. All right, here's a one where the tassels have turned brown. Let's see what we have inside. It's very small, as you can see. I can feel the kernels have developed, but there's just not a lot of them. So, as you can see, the kernels did form. There are some missing that did not pollinate correctly. But for the most part, but for the most part, they formed. It was just a small ear. So we've been picking them and just eating them raw as a snack. I don't know that we'll have much more than that much to do with it because there's a pretty small amount. Well, just as I suspected, the okra has grown as tall as me. Miss Elsie has already picked while we were gone and chopped it up and made a wonderful dish for us for the freezer. And she picked another load that she gave us a bucket of the day we came home. So you can see they already need to be picked again. These fruit get big fast and they get very woody when they get large. So this is as big as I want them to get. Well, this corn is doing pretty good. And the pumpkins that are coming up and the watermelon that are coming up are doing okay. I mean, it's for a field that doesn't get any water, I'm pretty happy with this. This is some more pumpkins or gourds, I'm not sure which. And then some more watermelon. Looks like we'll have plenty of watermelon if the deer don't get in here and eat it. The tomatoes are starting to flop over from not being staked at all, which I expected to happen. And I'm just gonna have to be okay with that. Some of them are getting bad blight and some of them are doing fantastic so this is a survival of the fittest and I'm sure we'll get some tomatoes out of here and we will be glad that we did it I mean I'm already getting to eat some sun golds so I'm a happy girl these are my favorite cherry tomato and I'm so excited to eat these. Not bad. Oh my goodness. I almost missed this big boy. 
Hello, giant cucumber. Where did you come from? Put you in my bucket with my giant okra. <laughs> the size of this okra. Fun. Got a couple of tomatoes and some lemon squash. Some red noodle beans covered in aphids, so I'm gonna leave them out of the bucket. Picking some cucumbers now. Oh my goodness. That's just from touching those noodle beans. Black. Gonna have to make some pickles, I guess. This one got a little too big. It's starting to yellow, so I think I'm gonna use that for relish. I just scraped the inside of the seed area out with a spoon and chop it up and make it just like I would any other relish. Except I tend to make my pickles and relishes in a lacto-fermented method. So I use a different brine and I don't can it at the end. So that those are some of my favorite ways to make pickles, whether it's pickled okra, pickled beans, pickled cucumbers. I love to do lacto-fermentation. You can check out my probiotic pickle video if you're interested in how to do that. You basically do that recipe with any vegetable that you're using. So that just leaves the cherry tomatoes to be harvested. And my bucket is full and I didn't bring a bowl. And what I like to do with the cherry tomatoes is I sit them on the table in a bowl and the kids just devour them like candy. So I'm gonna finish up here, go in, get a bowl, and probably come back out again when it cools off a little bit because it's starting to get hot out here. Overall, I think it was a successful vacation where the farm sitter was able to take care of the animals, keep them fed and happy, keep them alive. <laughs> Everything is in good condition when we got home and we feel like we got a little break and now we'll be refreshed once we recover from our vacation. You know, we need a vacation from our vacation because when you go on vacation, you don't actually rest. You do so many things in such a short period of time that you're exhausted when you get home. So yeah, I'm exhausted, but I'm exhausted with a happy full heart from being able to see my family and hug them and enjoy some time with them. So thank you guys for being patient while the videos ran a little further apart and hopefully we'll get back into the swing of things and back in the saddle again.